Hello everyone, my name is Fletch and welcome to episode 2 of the Dynamic Duo. Uh, and of course with me, I have my co-host, Chopper Fat. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Hope you liked the premiere last week. We have more in store for you now. Okay, so today uh, we'll be talking about... Suspensions. Because guess what? We're still talking about the comfort of the butt. Exactly, it's all about the butt two weeks in a row. Right. So, uh, <laughs> as as you know, the the episodes that we have out uh, for the dynamic duo is not specifically to the Harley. I think anything that we talk about will not be specific about the bikes that we ride, but can apply to every single bike that's out there. Right. So whether it's seats and and in this week we're talking about suspensions, and I think uh, it's good to understand the types of suspensions that we have. Right. So what what sort of suspensions are out there in the market? Right, so there's all different types out there. There's you got your gas shocks, you got air shocks, you got your coils. There's like five or six actual different types, and that's just for the back end. You also have the front end as well that you have to be concerned with because you know all of them have a different preload. It's going to affect how you lean into a turn. I mean, there's so many different things that go into it. I'm not an expert on it. I'm hoping I just put on the right shock and I'm good to go. But uh, you know that's that's just the way I roll because you know I I don't have that that technology skill set in my brain yeah, as far as how well that works. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm going. Yeah. I know, exactly. So we, we're not tech monkeys, so we don't really know uh, the, the actual functions deep within how the springs work and what the pressures are and, and so and so forth. But as as riders, we know what would be the, the perfect fit for the riding style, right? So uh, in general... The, the diners that we ride are what they call the twin shocks, meaning two, uh, two shocks on either side uh, are mounted on the frame. Uh, the new soft tails are mono shocks, which are normal for actually the sports bikes as well. A lot of the sports bikes are all mono shocks. Uh, in the old days, it used to be, but I think since the last, what, 10 years that they've moved to mono shocks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, uh, you have the touring range uh, and all the tourers that. Uh, either use uh, hydraulic and spring or gas in spring or gas shocks or air suspensions as well. But what, what do you think uh, are the first considerations uh, when you want to change your shocks? Well, the first thing you need to know is what's the application. So are you going to be, is it, again, is it for racing? Good. You can, you can go that route. Are you going for comfort? I mean, this is where we kind of get into that, uh, that tangent of, are we talking Harley or are we talking sport bike? Because really, they're going to be two separate things most of the time. Now, there's going to be some times where a, a maybe like an adventure bike will be set up similar to a Harley because you're looking for that 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 kind of the bounce going on. Uh, but that's where you got to go use the application first. And then after that is once you find the right application, you got to find the one that's going to work for your height because what you could do is end up raising it up too high. And then like we were talking about last week with tip tailing, that's going to lead to some dangers if you're, you know, what you're out on the street. Exactly. And I think uh, last week when we talked about, which is a really good point, uh, I think last week we talked about um, the seats and how it affects your, your sitting on a bike and, and whether you're tippy toeing or whether you're flat footing and so forth. And I think it applies the same as well to uh, your suspensions. Uh, because I know that at one point before I got a Harley, I wanted to get an adventure bike. Uh, I, so I tried the uh, the GS uh, 1200, uh, the BMWs, and I also tried the uh, Honda African Twin, which is also one of the better ones as well, right? Uh, the, the problem with these two is that they are pretty high. Um, the good thing about the BMWs is that they have they, you can electronically adjust the height, uh, not only just about the preload, but also the height. But the, it isn't very much. I think the leeway is maybe in, an inch or two. Uh, but with the African Twin, you literally have to swap out um, the suspension for a lowering kit. And when they say lowering kit, they actually mean a, low, a shorter suspension. Uh, and, how, and that would probably change the way the bike would handle. And I, th and I think uh, sometimes that's another consideration, right? You, you buy an adventure bike because you want to be able to handle the rough terrain and if you have shorter shocks, then your butt's going to hurt at the end of it because then there's little travel uh, and so forth. So I think that's an excellent point um, about the 
the, the way you sit on the bike and, and making sure that you're flat footing, I think it's not advisable uh, in terms of some bikes to actually do those changes uh, because it will mean that you change the dynamics of that particular bike, right? Right, yeah. And that's the thing with, you know, you're talking adventure bikes there, but now you start talking uh, early lines. So if you lower those bikes down, guess what? You're going to be scraping a lot more because you just got rid of your lean angle. Yeah, your bike looks exactly. really cool with no fender gap, but now you're... Exactly. <sighs> like, I didn't remember my oh wife my God. was training. She was training on her Sportster. And the previous owner had put a, a lowering block, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but the, he had lowering blocks on it, which lowered it about an inch. And she was scraping the kickstand as a trainee, like going through parking lots. <laughs> so you just hear, <laughs> and like, okay, if you're scraping now, when you're actually a skilled rider, you're gonna be leaning way too much. We gotta fix the suspension. So again, that's already, we found out that suspension wasn't right for her right off the get go, so. Okay, listen, I, yeah, that's cor- that's absolutely correct. You know, I mean, to me, is that again goes back to what we were saying. If you if you adjust the height uh, in any way, you're affecting the way the bike performs, right? Uh, and here we're just talking about rear suspensions. I, I know it's advisable for us to change uh, both, right? Uh, in terms of uh, your suspension, so if you change the rear, you have to change the forks as well. Uh, but I I think it all depends upon. Uh, the application again, right? So if we're talking back about Harleys, we're, we're riding mostly straight roads, we're doing some twisties and stuff. We're not going to be doing performance riding like a sports bike, right? So the sports bike, you really have to change both because uh, when you take those corners uh, and, and you do a front brake, it might dive. If it dives too much, then you lose uh, control of the bike. Yeah. In, in our case, yeah, I think one of the considerations would be uh, if you have to change the fork, is that whenever you're on the front brake uh, and, and you find that you're diving much more, then I think it's about time that you change, check the preloads. If not, do a change. Uh, otherwise, then uh, the entire performance of the bike changes as well. Yeah, for so, sure. Uh, I, I have, you know, we, we will get into our each application that we have, but I have lowered, or not lowered, but I have to replace the shocks on my bike and I haven't done the front. But again, it's it's working okay for my application. I know I'm not taking full advantage of what I've put on the bike, but it's still an upgrade over what was there. That's right. I mean, to me, uh, again, even if we do twisties, we're not taking the the, the posture of uh, a sports bike, right? We, when we do the twisties, we're doing it at speed, but we're not hammering the corners. We're just taking it, going with the flow. Right, so it, it sounds when you in the corners just before you hit the corners. You know when we when you talk about racing, right? Uh, just before you hit the corners to slow your to slow your speed down, you hit the brakes. Uh, chances are you're not going to dive anyway, uh, unless we're doing like uh, the sports bikes that are doing you know 200 uh, 200 miles uh, on or 200 kilometers an hour, not miles, 200 kilometers an hour <laughs> on the straights, and then go into a turn. <laughs> at about 150 or 160 and that's when the diving happens and that's when you really have to take care of the front uh suspensions right so what, what sort of what other suspensions do we have that is available for all other all these bikes um so you're gonna have your spring and coil types um those are usually gonna be what comes stock on most harley davidsons or any bike because they're they're cheap right they're mass produced then you're going to be able to get into the more expensive things like your gas shocks and then your air ride suspensions. I mean, and as you get into these different categories, so does your pocketbook goes way up. Uh, I know some of these suspensions, when you get it all said and done, can end up costing you two thousand, twenty five hundred dollars, depending on what way you go with it. And that's not a cheap thing. I mean, I. I mean, that's the price of some motorcycles. <laughs> so, and you're doing it just to make yours better, right? But, uh, you know, there's so many different types out there. It's just like, you know, where do, where do you start? Where, where do I even begin? And because you don't want to drop seven, 800 bucks on some shocks and have it be the wrong application. Exactly. Yeah, that's one of the things that, that um, puts a lot of us off and why it's always at the bottom of our list. Because it always turns out to be the most expensive thing, right? <coughs> you you could get a fairing for two hundred bucks. You could get a couple of bars for three or four hundred bucks. 
a seat will go for three to four hundred bucks, depending on, on, on what you want to get, right? But then suddenly, when you hit the suspensions and and you say you decide to go for an Olins, for instance, which is the top end uh, of all the suspensions, and for me, in my case, when I went went out to uh, the dealership and said, look, you know, I need to change. What do you recommend? So they said, ah, oh, the mid range is uh, is this brand, and and it costs about two thousand. Then say, okay, what's the best? Oh, Olins, man, no problem. You know, this is the best. You gotta go for it. Uh, not talking about the front forks, just the rear. It's four thousand dollars. Okay, later, man. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah. You know? Peace out. I'm out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm out of here. You know. Forget it. I'll I'll just you know zen out when I take when I when I hit potholes. You know, and, and stuff yeah. like that. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I think when we talk about uh, heights. Um, I think we also need to talk about uh, the weight that we put on the bike, right? So we have to consider um, what is the wet weight of the bike first, right? So we know that that on an average is about 250, 300 pounds uh, on the bike dry. Then you add petrol, then you add your luggage, and then you add yourself. So I think uh, when it comes to to adjusting. Um, the suspension; these are the things to to consider. What what else would you would we consider for adjustments of us uh, of the suspension? Well, I mean, once you get the suspension dialed in, it's going to, you know, change where you're sitting again. So, like we said last week, we're going to build around the seat. Well, now that seat that you have there has it's now put you in a different spot. So that's another thing you need to consider as far as okay, this suspension has raised me up. Can I still reach my foot pegs? Uh, or this suspension has raised me down. Am I going to bottom out? How do I set my preload so that doesn't happen? All those sort of things kind of play into it. And there's really no, you know, unless you just read and read and read and look at review after review, YouTube's a great place to look at things, but you're basically shooting fish into a barrel. You're you're shooting one and hoping this is the one that's going to work for you. So, um, we do try and read reviews and we do try and get some expert advice. There are a lot of YouTubers out there uh, and there are also a lot of uh, guys who are from dealerships that put out videos that, that talk about the best suspension for your bike. Still, it's about trial and error anyway because they're talking about the, 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 the broad strokes. You know, you can only know when you're getting it. So. As an example, you talked about the Sportster and changing out the Sportster for your wife's bike. Uh, I remember when I got my AA3R, and this is a 2004 bike. So the stock suspensions then were the worst in the world, you know. So I, I went out after riding a couple of times up uh, some mountain ranges and hitting some bad roads and potholes and stuff. Uh, I decided to to shell out uh, for the progressives. The progressives weren't so bad. I think they're about a thousand dollars. Uh, thereabouts, and it was then in 2004, um, and it changed the the way the bike suddenly handled. It could take really bad roads, you know. And suddenly, I'm on par with the V twins and the bigger bikes as well. That I feel the comfort, that I won't be hesitating when I come to bad roads or potholes. Right. So I, I think I got I got to ask you, man. I got to ask you. Sure. You're saying a thousand dollars for a pair of progressives, or what progressives were they? Do you remember? I think they were the four. Were they the four one twos or the four one, four one twos or four one threes? I think they were thirteen. Uh, okay. Because stock is about 13, 13 inches. I got mine at fourteen inches, and it was still spring. Uh, you know, it wasn't uh, gotcha. the, the hydraulics then. But I think it was about the travel, uh, the, the the amount of travel and the amount of preload that you can add to it. I think you had more more options to go uh, full preload or, or less. More so than 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 the the Harley's. I think the Harley's you only have about three or four uh, sets of preloads. Uh, you have a bigger choice for for the aftermarket ones. So going back right. to what you were saying before, um, and, and talking about getting uh, the suspension, and in my case, I was talking about the A three R, and you you did ask me uh, how how was it and how did I sit on the bike. Uh, I think height is still a, an important consideration. Uh, and how you are placed on the bike, and how the bike is placed uh, above the tarmac, right? That we're going through because uh, we may be comfortable up there, but you know the poor bike's going to be hitting stuff, and you'll be scratching out your paint, 
and then your pegs and everything else. Uh, I, I think that's pretty tough as well. Uh, we right. were talking about height earlier. What was the other factor that we need to take into account? Your lean angle, because if you have a, a cruiser like us, your lean angle is generally like 25 or 30 degrees is all, whereas a sport bike, your lean angle is like could be up to 45 or not, if even higher degrees where you can get really low to the ground and scrape your knees. Uh, but most Harley people, we, we scrape pegs. I don't personally, because I'm not that aggressive of a rider, but uh, I know a lot of people who do. Uh, my buddy on his soft tail scrapes all the time, and it's not even doing anything aggressive. It's just, there's just no, there's just no leaning over when you have the foot more and the pegs just so close to the ground. You are a low rider. Even though you're on a breakout or something else, you are all low riders when it comes to being on a cruiser. Uh, so that's the next thing that you can do is like, so you can raise it up a little bit. If you raise it up an inch, like I raised my bike up an inch to 13 inch shock, and it actually completely changes your lean angle, it gives you an extra three or four degrees to where, where you were scraping, now you're not. So you, you have a little bit more, I guess the word would be, you have a little bit more lean that you can actually do before you would actually start hitting that uh, oh crap handle <laughs> or you know the uh, I, i've gone too far so um but yeah <laughs> i think uh, the one time i did scrape i was like oh okay a little, little too a little, little too much into that one and so that's i i am a very slow rider for the most part but uh i do like to actually sit up a little bit higher and i will talk you know again later about how sitting up higher actually you know, affects everything else too. I mean, because you're sitting up an inch higher. I mean, you wouldn't think that's a big deal. Well, my fairing's now different. It's now hitting me more in the face than it was because I don't have to adjust the fairing and everything else. So there's just so many factors that go in when you change one aspect of the bike, whether it's the seat or it's suspension. It's just like, it's like, it's like why it's so hard to dial in a bike. Um, and that's why our wives, girlfriends, spouses just, love the fact that we just spend so much money on these things <laughs> it's like didn't you just didn't you just buy one of those i did but it's not the right one <laughs> so <laughs> did you don't you have like five seeds and what's those things that those long things are sitting on the floor there you know uh, did you did it just come off the bike and what are those brand new oh my god but <laughs> now I don't buy anything brand new hardly anymore, so I, I have learned that. And you know, just for uh, for you Dyna guys out there, you guys need to check out FXR and Dyna Parts on Instagram. It's a bunch of resellers, and that's where I get majority of my parts. My shocks I got for almost thirty percent off because they had a thousand miles on them. So wow. if you're okay with it not being brand new and shiny, and maybe having a scrape. Check out that page because it's a bunch of good sellers, a bunch of good dudes, and you can save yourself a pretty penny. That's an excellent tip. So we're going to put that in our cards and in the description below for that. Uh, I think it's a good idea because we shouldn't always have to buy brand new anyway. Uh, and and if, you're, if you're worried about a little scrape uh, or little scratches or whatever, that's going to happen anyway because we are riding long distance, right? It's like, it's like when you buy a brand new car, right? It's like oh. you, you take it home and you wax it for the first time and you see that first rock chip it's like it's Man. sometimes it's better just to come with a rock chip and then that way it's like yeah now that's just another one that's just another one. your heart doesn't cry the first time you see that scratch so yeah, exactly i know <laughs> so that's 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 pretty good so anyway we're talking about uh the 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 changes on the, on the bike and i think uh, in your case you changed it to uh, legends right the that is that the brand that you right. changed to right so yep, i went with legend but your Evos. Exactly. So uh, we have actually a special guest with us today, uh, and he is the Harley Roadshow Paul, and he actually also swapped out uh, his uh, Ultra Classic, I believe that's his bike, uh, a touring bike, and uh, he's here to tell us a little bit more about the changes that he's made and uh, how it's affected him as a rider and his riding style. Over to you, Paul. G'day, I'm Paul from the Harley Road Show. So Fletch and Chopper have asked me to uh, talk about the Legend Air Suspension that I had installed on my 2010 uh, Electric Light Ultra Classic. So I had the Legend Air Suspension installed in the bike uh, earlier this year. And I've got to say, as far as comfort and ride goes, it is probably the best thing you'll ever uh, invest your money in um, on a motorcycle. 
to say the ride is different and impressive is an understatement. It is fantastic. The best part about it is it's got a lifetime warranty. So no matter what happens to it, you take it back, they replace it. Price, they're not cheap. It cost me uh, $2,500 to get it done. Dollars, it's Aussie dollars. Um, but the the performance and the, and, the, and the ride is just exceptional. I went away, if some of you saw it, we did a big trip up to Bright early in the year. We had luggage, we had, you know, it was two up and you there's no difference in the ride if it's me or if I've got a pillion with luggage, the ride doesn't change. So as you can see, it just bolts onto the same spot as the original suspension. Nothing changes there. You've got some adjustment down here. Um, and then the other adjustment is up on the handlebars. Let's have a look at that. So to adjust the system on the fly, it's as simple as a touch of a button. And that's letting air out of the system. Down she drops. So that's the Legend Air Ride Suspension. In my opinion, a great bit of kit. Hope you enjoyed that little segment. Back to you guys, back to the Dynamic Duo. Catch you next time. Thanks uh, Thanks again for that, Paul. That was a very awesome review of your uh, Legend Suspensions. I wish, I wish I could go up and down like that. I mean, <laughs> oh, yes. just think of the show <laughs> capabilities alone. You can slam it when you're at the show, and then when you're ready to go, you just raise it back up and you just take off. Cool. I can only imagine with it being a touring bike plus Legends, it must be just like riding just like on your lazy boy recliner all the way down i like i i oh would love God. to ride it one day i know but here's the funny thing a thought just occurred to me that uh when you realize in 2000 the, all the 2020 models that we have for the touring bikes none of them have adjustable shocks on the fly you're talking about uh like the ultras and the glides and the road kings these are supposed to be the touring lines right uh and None of them. They 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 claim that okay, they have that, that that easy adjustment on the side, you know. But that's not the same. You still got to get off the bike, make the adjustment, get on the bike, and go. Uh, whereas when you look at uh, the other adventure bikes and the other touring bikes that you have out there, uh, they literally will be able to adjust uh, the suspension on the fly. They realize that oh, okay, the the road's really pretty bad. You right? They could actually just change it on the fly without getting off the bike. And I think that's really important because. Uh, to to have to stop and get everybody to stop so that you can do your stuff, and, and don't forget that uh, I'm not so sure about the touring bikes, but for us we have to take out tools to to adjust the preload. So that's going to take you know half an hour, and then everybody's bloody waiting and shit. You do, you have to take out tools. Uh, I have to take out. So so I have stopped right. I I, I, I haven't not because I don't want to go for the old ins. I'm a cheap ass. Right. right but uh at the present moment for the way i'm riding uh i don't put too much luggage on anyway so uh it doesn't bottom out i think um when i did the last long trip uh, to thailand uh it's always the last bit that we hit really bad roads previously before i i did uh, the change on the on the preloads i would bottom out quite often but after i made the changes on the preload uh then I would bottom out maybe once or twice the entire trip, so I could live with that. Okay. Although, although the the pain, well, not well, there is some pain because you get you hit your tailbone, right? When you bottom out mm -hmm. at high speeds, right? That's really bad, and it's not good for your frame if you keep hitting the frame over long t uh, over a, a long period of time. Which is the other reason for having suspension anyway, right? It's not just to mm -hmm. protect your butt, but it's also to protect the, the the integrity of the bike as well because if you're bottoming out all the time you're hitting wiring you're hitting frames uh you, you're just going to shorten the life of the bike uh anyway right so uh since we're on the the, the topic of preload uh what would be the considerations in making when you do the adjustments on preloads well so for me i i'm fortunate i am a set it and forget it type because I'm already on the, the heavier side anyway, so my preload is usually not quite maxed out, but close to it. And when I do luggage, my, my max luggage is my saddle and tunnel bag with five shirts and some toiletries in it. So I know that's less than 10 pounds and you don't need to adjust your preload for 10 pounds. I mean, that's just, 
you don't need to do it. But one thing you need to consider when you are doing your preload is that that shock compresses, you know, when you sit on the bike, right? And so, like for my Legends, for example, they're a 13 inch shock. And so they say, when you sit on the bike, that shock should compress down to 12 inches. So they actually give you how, what your dial in diameter should be. So what I had to do when I set mine was I sat on the bike and luckily the guy who, guy who had the shocks before me was a big guy. And I sat on the bike and I measured it. It was exactly 12 inches. So I actually had to do no adjustment, but you know, that's what you have to do is cause you know, because before it was a 12 inch shock and I was shrinking it down to 11. So it, it's one of those things where, you know, again, you have to have a tool to do yours. So you want to, you know, find an easier way. And that's when you kind of get into these, you know, upper price suspensions for me to adjust my, my preload. I just have to turn the shock. That's all I have to do. I can do it by hand, real easy to do, real easy to get, get both sides equal on it as well. Um, whereas with my, I had the emulsion shocks off the FX DLS, you had to have a special tool. You had to have a special tool for the uh, special spanner wrench for the stock shocks. But, uh, but yeah, that's, those are some things because what's nice is, you know, I bought a spring on my Legends that was built for my size. I think they can go up to 550 pounds total, total load on these shocks. I'm not, I'm not 550 pounds, <laughs> maybe. 550 kilograms, but not 550 pounds. Uh, so I knew I knew me plus my tunnel bag, we were gonna be just fine with it. Now, if I was to have a passenger on there, then I might be kind of pushing the edge of things. Uh, but I knew my wife was gonna ride her own ride. So I don't have to worry about that. Again, that's all these things you need to think of before you lay down your five, six, seven hundred dollars. Exactly, so when we talk about considerations, like you said, it's about the height and travel of the of the uh the suspension itself now in the case of the legends that you have are they purely spring or are they hydraulic in spring um uh, mine are a spring shock um from all i from all of the research i've done on them there's there's no gas there's no air that goes into them they're just you know they compress and they have like a, a piston inside that kind of you know is for the rebound it's what pushes you back up right exactly and uh yeah. Consideration of getting a uh, shock, what would you take into account uh, when trying when to get the right type of shocks for yourself? So, you know, it's, you know, you got, again, it goes back to how we started the video. It's about your application, right? So I knew, I started with a stock shock. Everyone starts with stock, unless, you know, you buy used, what have you. But uh, I went with FX DLS shocks second, and they were a major upgrade. Like, because you can find them used. They're a $600 suspension from Harley. You can find them used for $150 shipped all day long. So I tried them out and wow, it, it was the first time I was like, this has made a huge difference. Cause I was, you know, I wasn't bottoming out stock shocks, but you know, it was harsh. This was my first part. This is my first time getting, oh, I, I absorbed that. I absorbed that. And so I got to the point where, you know, with everything that I, I ride on around here, it's Powerful City. So I wanted something that rides more like a Cadillac. And so when I found that the Legends, the Revos that I have, kind of have that, that kind of floating effect to them, man, that first ride was just, I was hitting every pothole and I was just like, was smiling. It's like, yep, didn't feel that. Oh, those train tracks don't feel that either, so. Um, so that's what I was looking for. I was looking for more the, the cruising type because I want to put some miles on the bike and I want to, you know, again, protect myself, protect my bike's frame from any sort of, you know, ill travels on the road type of thing. So that's that's what I was looking for when I decided to go ahead and take the plunge. Right. So, you, you know, when you consider about uh, the fact that stocks were pure springs and, and you swapped out to another pure spring bike, uh, spring suspension, not spring bike. And uh, I, I think the difference between the stock and, and the aftermarkets are the quality and the strength of the uh, of the uh, the springs, right? And the pounds per pressure that it could take uh, as opposed to the, the, the stock ones we have. And it will be the same for when you consider taking air shocks, right? In air shocks, what it is is that unlike Paul's, 
<laughs> you could manual you could have a little uh, manual adjustment there uh, electronic uh, <laughs> adjustment there uh, we I, I believe that um, the touring lines uh, that has air shocks you would have to consider the PSI just like your tires right and they would have a rating table uh, to tell you you know at this weight rating this has got to be X number of PSI uh, and so and so forth and I think these are the things to, to consider when you're adjusting your preload uh, for air shocks, right? And we've talked about springs as well. With the air shocks, what kind of turned me away from there is I feel like that's just a something you have to constantly maintain. And it's just, it's another T-clock check that, you yeah. know, because over yeah. time that air pressure changes either up or down a little bit. And, you know, without even doing anything to your bike, your preload has changed on its own. So. I just wanted to again. I'm a set it, forget it type. Yeah, I, I think that's that, that is another concern because we always have to think about and just like yesterday when I took my bike out for a ride, the first thing I, I noticed was already uh, the tires, right? So it, whether you're sitting there or not, uh, there's going to be some leakage, and it's going to be the same for uh, for suspensions, air shock suspensions. So it's a it's a good thing to always go in there and check the PSI, uh, make sure that uh, you got the right PSIs on it. Uh, just like um, your tires before you go on a long trip, check your tires, pump your tires to the right pressure, and then you have to do the air shocks as well. So those are uh, one of the other considerations. So the good thing about the shocks that we would probably go for, whether it's uh, hydraulic and spring or just pure springs, we would just set it. It should be good for most applications. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, it changing over time. I don't think it should, right? Uh, the way it's made. Uh, and and that way we are still we will be com we will always have a comfortable ride. I think that's just about it for today and, and what we talked about suspensions. I think we've covered the types of suspensions, we've covered the height, we've covered the preload, uh, and and the last thing was uh, posture, right? So uh, I, I think how you sit on the bike um, after putting on those shocks and putting on the preload then you would have to then take a look of how you're sitting and how it changes your riding posture on the bike and, and what do you think that you have to consider the changes that you might have to make if you make a change on uh, on the suspension in terms of posture <clears throat> the one thing you're going to do is when you, that's for me i raise myself up right so now my my the travel to my legs is further which for me worked out perfectly i'm a big guy anyway and so I already had forwards on there. I, I'm not going to get much more <laughs> adjustment out of that, <laughs> but uh, it made it made that more comfortable for me. Um, however, when I did put the taller shock on there, the next thing I noticed is now my bars are lower than because I'm sitting up. I'm up, you know, I'm a little bit raked because I'm up higher and I haven't done anything to the front to just for it. So now I'm more. Not quite drag bar style, but I am, you know, I, I like my bars shoulder height. Um, not necessarily like ape hangers, but I like, I'm a, I'm a club style guy. I like my T bars. And so, um, you know, I was able to, uh, once I put those on, I work with Rogue Rider Industries, which again, just a plug, I, I love them. <laughs> I, I plugged them in my last video on my mail call. It's just, they are such a good company to work with and uh, what he would, what he did for me, he's like, well, what, what's your goal? What's your, what's your new goal now? I was like, well, I want it to be straight across. He's like, well, I think 13 inch height sounds about right for you. So we ended up with like a seven and a half inch riser with a five inch bar. So haven't installed it yet, but I already can tell it's going to be perfect off of, off of my measurements. And so, you know, so you got your foot pegs and now your bars are the next things. And again, you can get even more detail with fairings and everything else with it. But as far as your posture goes, foot pegs and bars are going to change a little bit when you start messing with your suspension. Exactly right. I think uh, at the end of the day is that when you make changes to the seat and you make changes to uh, the suspension, it will change the entire rider triangle altogether, right? And you have a particular style of writing that this is the triangle that you want in your case uh, and it's the same for me anyway when you make all those changes in your suspension you have to think about your posture uh, and your writing style and your writing triangle then you have to look at your your bars and the risers and then probably your fairing 
then what happens is that you change the dynamics of the bike. <laughs> See what you did right. there. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay, so it looks like uh, we've hit the end of our show. Once again, thank you very much, folks, for uh, coming. Uh, if you if you're new to the channel, and if you're new to this uh, particular show, please do go check out Chopper Fat's channel. I'll leave the the link up uh, on the above and on the description below. And please do go like, subscribe, and ring his bell <laughs> to get notifications of when he does it. Ring my bell. <laughs> <laughs>